Welcome to worship. Good morning. Welcome to church. We're glad you're here. Hello, and welcome to worship. Hi, welcome to Church of the Dunes. Good morning. Welcome to church. Good morning. We're glad you're here. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Dunes. Welcome to church. We're glad you're here. Welcome to church. We're glad you're here. Good morning and welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. Welcome to Church of the Dunes. Good morning and welcome to the United Methodist Church of the Dunes in Grand Haven, Michigan. I'm Pastor Lou Grettenberger and this is our online worship experience. We are glad you are here. If you haven't been here before, I want to remind you that we do have a worship service that requires reservations each Sunday morning in person as well. But we invite you now to participate in this version of church with us. This time I turn you over to Carla to tell you more about the ministry of our church and what's happening today. Good morning. In just a couple of weeks, Church of the Dunes will have a brown bag drive through drop-off event to gather non-perishable food items for the People Center. A list of dates, most needed items, and other details are provided in today's bulletin, which is available on the church's website, and also in the weekly announcements email that was sent out on Thursday. Thanks to everyone who participated in the Halloween drive through car parade. That event was so much fun and many, many dozens of shelf-stable cups of applesauce, fruit, and vegetables were gathered to donate to Backpack Blessings. In late October, the Stewardship Committee sent out a letter to members and friends of Church of the Dunes. Along with the letter was a forecast of giving card and a return envelope. If you did not receive a forecast of giving card and you would like one, please contact the church. The committee hopes that as many forecast of giving cards as possible can be returned by November 10th. The information will help with planning for the new year. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's join Pastor Lou as we worship God together. Will you join us now in our invitation to worship? Are you awake? Are you alert? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Are you watching the signs? Are you interpreting what is happening today? Christ is coming into our lives in a new way. Do you see the opportunities for ministry? Do you see the poor, the homeless, the hungry, the needy? Christ is coming into the, our lives in a new way. Come, let us worship and let us work in the reign of God. Christ has extended the invitation. Let us work together in the reign of God on earth. Join me now in our first hymn, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above.
boys and girls, I wanted to introduce to you to my new puppy, Rosie. Rosie is a wonderful part of our family, and Rosie is learning lots of things. One of the things she's learning to do is to walk on a leash. In our lives, we can't do everything we want to do. We have lots of freedom. But as Christians, we remember that part of our freedom is learning how to walk with God. And so I wondered if you could think about some of the ways that God has us on a leash, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but we need to follow God's rules, right? We need to do life the way that God asks us to. And the reason that we have rules is that God helps keep us safe, and God helps us in the walk of life. If we'll just trust God to guide us along the way and make sure that we don't get hurt or in trouble. Rosie's learning about that, aren't you, Rosie? Hey, Rosie, you want to say hi? Hey, baby, sit. Sit. Oh, yeah. Shake my hand. Shake. Good girl. I hope that you'll be learning about all the things you need to do with your life so that you can serve God better. Amen. Please join me now as we confess our sins together and invite God's amazing grace into our lives. Lord, forgive us when we so easily turn our backs on you, when we choose not to help in times of need, when we utter words of anger and bitterness as ways to relate to one another. Heal our hearts and our wounded spirits. Lift us from the depths of our anguish into the light of your love, that we may serve you faithfully. When the darkness becomes oppressive and we cling to our fears, O oh Lord, forgive us. Open our hearts and release us from all those things which block us from your love. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words of comfort to us. God, God's brilliant love burst through the oppressive darkness to heal our spirits and to prepare us to become effective disciples rejoice. God's love is poured out for you. Amen. It's a special time of year as we decide how we might support financially our church in the coming year. This has been a difficult year both for the church and all of us in our personal lives. And so we appreciate your faithfulness as you try to forecast your giving for the coming year. As we bring together our offerings and we send those, of course, uh, to the church office or give online. We also today are inviting you to send your commitment cards if you haven't already, and if you have, to join us especially in this blessing of the gifts expected for next year. We join me now in our prayer of dedication for this Stewardship Sunday. We dedicate our gifts to you, O God. Help us to use them to glorify you, to be vessels of your work in this world. We dedicate our pledges to you, O God. Guide our leaders as they prepare us financially for the coming year. Use us, O God, to do your work in this world. Encourage us to see that we are all ministers called into the body of Christ. Use us in your service. We pray over these gifts, blessing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Hebrews scripture, the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. now from Joshua chapter 24 verses 1 through 3 and 14 through 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and some of the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. 
I gave him Isaac. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it for us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amor Amorites, who lived in the land, Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to his people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put your foreign gods away that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve and him will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinance for them at Shechem. May God bless this reading of the stories of the Hebrew faith in our scriptures. Amen. Let us pray. Open our hearts and our spirits to the movement of your Holy Spirit in your direction in this time in our nation and in our world and in our church. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I read to you a prayer this morning. O oh God, keep our whole country under your protection. Wipe out sin from this land. Lift up from the depth of sorrow, O oh Lord, our shining light. Save us from misfortune, Lord of all the nations. Bless us with your wisdom so that the poor may not be oppressed and the rich may not be oppressors. Make this a nation having no ruler except God, a nation having no authority but that of love. Amen. You might think I wrote that prayer for today. It's so fitting. And it certainly could have been written for today. But after this crazy week of elections with us rejoicing or crying or maybe a little bit of both or still waiting to figure it out, this prayer resonates with us because of the universal nature of sinfulness, of enmity, and of structural brokenness. This prayer, however, was actually written by Toyohiko Kagawa. Kagawa was a Japanese man who was converted to Christianity by a missionary couple to Japan. Kagawa's parents had died when he was at a very young age. And once having come under the wisdom and instruction of these persons in his life, his declaration of faith in Jesus Christ actually caused him to be separated from his extended family as well, who disowned him. But by God's grace, he did find someone to care for him. He attended Presbyterian school and eventually seminary as well as if moving to the USA and Princeton University. Kagawa lived, in fact, way back in, well, he was born in 19, or 1888 and lived until April of 1960. But with all that he had and all that he gained and all the education, he felt compelled to go back to Japan. It was there where he was eventually prisoned for his activism. He worked for adult male suffrage. In that time that Japan needed that, and later he would work for women's suffrage as well. While studying at Kobe Seminary in Japan, he was troubled, though, by the overemphasis of students on doctrine and doing things exactly the same way. Because Ka Kagawe, in his work, had come to believe that Christianity in action 
is the greatest truth. I'm unsure whether this prayer was written while he was in spending time in Japan or in the United States. But honestly, I think Kagawa's heart was in both places. When World War II ended, Kagawa was sent and invited to work as a part of the interim government in Japan and the, the rebuilding of Japan that came after World War II. Led by his faith in such a difficult time, he went before Emperor Hirohito and said, quoting scripture, of course, whoever will be great among you shall be servant of all. He said that to the emperor. And then he said, a ruler's strength, your majesty, is in the hearts of the people. Only by service to others can a man or a nation be godlike. Kagawa would go on to write beautiful books and prayers. He was in and out of prison for his activism. He was even nominated twice for the Nobel Peace Prize in the mid-1950s. Kagawa's God and neighbor philosophy, and I would say theology, and the thoughts of the prayer that I read today are mimicked in our scripture as we find it in the Hebrew scriptures of Joshua today. But I also think what's happening in the world is mimicked again today in our nation. I wrote this sermon today while the decision of many positions in our government were still not decided, including the presidentship still weighing in the balance. But the truth is, no matter who fills the positions of the executive branch or the judicial branch or the legislative branch, or for that matter, who fills the leadership roles of our spiritual life in our churches, synagogues, and mosques, we must all find our way forward with those twin truths that Jesus pens as one by loving God and our neighbor. This is the highest way of honoring God. You can argue theological fine points with me. But when it comes down to it, this is the first order of business. We would look, do well to look at the ancestors of our faith and listen for the words from our prophets Amos and also for the words from Joshua today. In the shattered existence of a sin-filled nation, Amos cries out, Let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. In fact, Amos goes so far as to say that, you know, real worship isn't about the solemn festivals or even beautiful singing or perfect prayers. He says God doesn't delight in that or at least compared to what he does what God does delight in God delights in fighting for true justice In Joshua 24 we find the story of the recovering nation of Israel Joshua gathers all the leaders from all the tribes with two particular purposes the repatriation and burial of Joseph's bones at Shechem and also the renewal of the covenant that was authored at Shechem in the time of Abraham. Joshua starts by telling the leaders of Israel, remember who you are, and then invites them to make some choices. As readers, we've gotten kind of used to following the Exodus and and the way that the Israelites repeat, remember who saved us, who brought us out of the land of Egypt into the wilderness and guided us to the promised land. Joshua reminds all the attendees who God is and what God has done for them in a similar fashion today. He reminds them of the difficulty of the journey all the way up to that present moment and also of the nature of God, the steadfast action and love of God that they have seen over and over in their lives. God's provision. Joshua, I think, this day is praying and hoping that they'll make the right decision. And that if they do, that God will give them a second chance. Because this, Joshua believes it, is a God of second chances. 
So Joshua makes his declaration as he throws out a challenge of faith. Choose this day whom you shall serve, whether the gods of your ancestors you served across the river, or as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. We will serve the Lord, one God. This is the center pinion of the faith of Joshua and Joshua's people. And the people respond, far be it for us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. And Joshua goes back and says, yes, but you can't have it both ways. You have to choose. And then the people say, no, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua says again, okay, your words are a witness against yourself. We're going to hold you to account later for your promises. And the people say, in essence, great, no problem. And Joshua says it again. And the people agree, hold us to it. Hold us to the words that we promised before. That's not an exact quote. But that's what they're saying. If we ever do anything different than what we promise, hold us accountable. We will serve and obey the Lord. Pinky promise. And with that, Joshua formed a coalition government between all 12 tribes under the covenantal relationship of God. They were one in their devotion to God. That's what we need to hear today. That no matter what our tribe, no matter what our party, that we are one as we seek God's way and will for our life. Today I'm praying that we as a church can gather and claim a common faith in God and neighbor. And that we will be reminded and believe that the best way to honor our God, the best way to worship God, is to unlock the forces of justice and love in this world and reclaim our common faith. We too have choices to make. But the false choice is a choice between two political parties. We must choose between gods of economics and politics and the God of love and justice and grace. The way we show that choice is not through solemn assemblies, declarations of loyalty alone, although those are meaningful to me and I know to you. When we say who we are and what we believe in, we make and fulfill our covenant by actively working for God and with one another so we can make a difference for God in the world. Joshua lived it. Kagawa lived it. Jesus lived it. Now we need to live it. To make a choice, to realize that a choice means leaving some things and ways of being behind we need to make a choice to live in harmony with one another and in service to our God. Join me now in our prayer. Oh Lord God, we thank you for this week, for this opportunity to serve you. It is a troubling time. It is a difficult time. But at the same time, Lord, as we take on the challenges of our world together, we know that you are with us. It is one of the promises of the Exodus story that as we journey together step by step, that we find our way to the promised land, not all at once, and not led by one person, but over time, as we continue to raise up leaders in our midst, we pray, God, that you will lead our leaders so that we know that we are following you. We pray also for all those newly elected officials. And all those who are finishing their terms, thank you, God, for the service of all who strive and try to serve our nation and our world. At the same time, we pray for the leaders of our church as we continue to navigate waters that move us in new directions. We pray, O oh God, that you might lead us. We thank you, God, for your forgiveness, for none of us is perfect. All of us make mistakes. We pray that we might find grace in these moments and offer grace as well. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me now in our praise of God. To God be the glory. and love of our Lord Jesus Christ to serve the Lord and your neighbor, to love the Lord and your neighbor, to make a difference in every moment and in every word that you speak this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>